All right, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at this. This is a GoPro mount for your DJI FPV drone. While it's not really the best idea to use one of these, we did design this to be a hell of a lot more durable and way more functional than the other mounts that are on the market today. So how does the flight footage look and why would you use this? Well, let's find out. Alrighty, what's good guys? Today I'm gonna to be showcasing and showing you the footage out of the Hero 8 mounted to the top of the DJI FPV drone. Now this is a mount that me and Ethan designed. Ethan and I designed. Uh, we've been going back and forth over the past couple of weeks trying to really refine the design of this. And we made this completely out of PLA because we wanted it to be about as strong as it possibly could. We've torture tested it. Well, the only thing it's scratched up is the props. A little bit of road rash on that. I think it's okay. Actually, this GoPro mount saved it. Holy shit. We've finally fine-tuned the perfect positioning of the mount to try to give you the best CG, which is the center of gravity of the drone, along with you know not interfering with the GPS or the overall cooling of this device. Now, I've done multiple tests with this, and um, yeah, we've had no issues with, uh, with vibrations. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start flying this right now and we'll do a test flight with the stick cam so you can sort of see things and we'll put it side by side with the footage coming out of the FPV drone because that's gonna give you the best understanding why you would do this because the dynamic range out of the FPV drone is a little bit challenged as of right now. All right, let's, let's start flying. All right, so to give you a rundown of the camera specs, everything is set to the normal color profile. GoPro set to 4K60, the FPV drone is set to 4K60. We're gonna be flying in manual mode at about 18 degrees because we don't wanna be really ripping very fast. And uh, that's, there we go, let's go ahead and try this out. Now I chose this location specifically for a couple of reasons. One, it is a challenging place to fly, but most importantly, it's gonna really showcase how bad the dynamic range is on the FPV drone because you're gonna be going in and out of this woods. And uh, yeah, this will showcase how good the uh, GoPro actually is, I think. Along with the stabilization as we sort of uh, nimbly navigate our way through all this here. A lot of scraggle in here. Trying to find an in to come back, but uh, let's see what we can do here. Is that a squirrel? That's a squirrel. I swear to Christ, is that a squirrel? It sounds like it's moving towards me. I don't do well with wildlife. I'm like frantically trying to fly back to me as I'm supposed to be talking about this GoPro mount. I don't see it, it's not a squirrel. Wait, where is this squirrel? All right, hell with the squirrel, we'll just keep flying. All right, so you're gonna notice the weight of the GoPro on here. You're also gonna notice you're gonna take a hit in battery life. That unfortunately is inevitable, but the biggest thing for me is anything more than a Hero 8, I feel like there's something on me. What is crawling on me? Um, what is that? All right, so as I was saying, anything more than a Hero 8, you're going to feel the weight. You're gonna feel the weight. So if you're trying to use like a, a Hero 9, it's gonna be pretty heavy and you're gonna notice it. This drone is very underpowered and you're gonna get the motors very, very hot if you put anything more than a Hero 8, Hero 6. By design, this mount really works super well with the drones, or I should say with the cameras that don't require any sort of soft stabilization. So if you wouldn't need soft stabilization on your, uh, your camera before, then these will be fine. So like Hero, uh, Hero 8, Hero 9, 6, 
seven, I don't know if this is gonna work out. Now you can use real steady. You don't have to use real steady on this, but you can if you want even smoother footage. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the way we designed this was so it can be as unobtrusive as possible, but while also maintaining the durability that you would want. I crashed this yesterday with the mount on on the street and um, I didn't have any problem with the uh, mount. The mount did not break. So I've been stress testing the mounts, making sure that it is good to go for most people. And I don't think there's gonna be any problems with it. God, I love digital. You can see everything. And this, like I said, is a very challenging wooded area. So we should be able to see how the GoPro is gonna perform versus the um, FPV drone. And I am flying in manual right now, just trying to zip along here. But you can fly in sport mode, normal mode with this mount. Um, it's, it's optimized for everything. You're not gonna be able to do any crazy freestyle crap with this on because if you try to split S something or, or do anything too hasty, you're gonna notice that this drone it just doesn't have the power to hang on tight. Now, I'm sort of tick-tocking back and forth through these woods. That again is gonna showcase the power of the stabilization of the GoPro because the FPV drone just doesn't do it as far as that goes. So hopefully this is showcasing you know, really the, re the reality of this whole video is hopefully what I want is that DJI will fix the dynamic range issues because it is really crunchy and um, it needs some work. So I'm flying at 18 degrees tilt and I feel like this is perfect for what I'm looking to achieve. And uh, yeah, this is working out pretty good. Oh shit, there's somebody back here. Is this a, what is this? There's somebody back here? Um, okay. I wasn't expecting that. I think there is a homeless shelter back there, or homeless camp. Going through this one more time, super low. So battery life's at 45% right now. So like I said, you are gonna notice some uh, impact here. That is going to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in now. Alrighty, so in looking over that footage, the two cameras were actually a little bit closer than I initially thought. Now, one handicap the GoPro is going to have in this instance was the fact that it was set to the maximum ISO of 100. I forgot to change it back to automatic before we started this test. So you are gonna notice some spots where it looks like the FPV drone is beating the GoPro, and that's only because the GoPro can't go any higher than 100. Now, you could also look at this as well, the GoPro dynamic range is pretty damn good for being at ISO 100 all the time. Now you'll notice that the shutter speed did decrease a little bit to, in order to sort of even out the exposure. And that's pretty normal. Um, you know, DJI's just got some work to do when it comes to the color and the overall sharpness of their image. It just feels really super crunchy and artificial as to where the GoPro is still sharp, but has the option to tone back that sharpness a little bit. So you have a little bit more added flexibility, although I still do like decent alike. Now, both of these were shot in their natural color profile, so there was nothing changed about this. This is how it came out of camera. You just got to sort of ask yourself, are you the type of person that likes GoPro footage? Do you plan on using real steady? If you are, then something like this is for a good use case scenario. Some negatives about adding a GoPro on the top is it's going to reduce the agility of this drone. Now, this drone by default isn't very agile, just right out of the gate from factory. It's just not an agile drone. And then you go and add a heavy GoPro on top of there. And if you're flying or thinking you're gonna put a Hero 9 on top of there, well, now you added a shit ton more weight to this already heavy underpowered drone, and it's just not gonna fly as well. It's gonna fly like crap. 
probably the reason why I crashed it just a couple of days ago is because I was not used to that added weight and I fly really low to the ground. Although the FPV drone totally survived that crash and came out unscathed, someone else probably wouldn't be so lucky. I also ran the risk of possibly a car running it over. Just not a good thing. So you got to sort of take this for face value. If you feel like you need something like this, it's there. We did design a mount that I feel is more durable and does perform better than the rest. Something that I want to make mention of. This mount is only going to work with the cameras that I've tested, which is a Hero 9, Hero 8, and Hero 6 Black. Those are three cameras that are not affected typically by a drone's vibrations. Now, the FPV drone doesn't really put out a tremendous amount of vibration like your typical FPV drone. So because of that, this works out really well. We also made this helmet to be as durable as possible with taking as much of a brunt force impact as possible. Um, this probably is the reason why I didn't destroy the drone entirely because it flipped over on the GoPro and not on the actual arms itself. So that's a pretty cool thing. But I've, like I said, we've made these things to be as strong as they possibly can. So if you want one, there's a link in the description below. Um, these are taking a little bit longer for us to produce and ship out. We're at a three day standby window for shipping. So keep that in mind if you do decide to go with this. But again, I don't recommend it, but I have a specific use case for adding a GoPro to the FPV drone. And it's more or less for long range scenarios where I want the reliability of the FPV drone, but I want GoPro footage. That's where this is going to come into play. Again, I don't think this is a good idea for beginners. Uh, to add a GoPro because now if you destroy your FPV drone, you also run the risk of destroying your GoPro, which is just, it's going to hurt when it breaks. So I did add a disclaimer to the sale of these that if you add this to your, your unit, I am not responsible for all your, your screw ups. And I don't want to hear you bitch that it made it heavier or all, all the shit. So there you go. Fly at your own risk. I just gave you the data. You do whatever it is, what you want with it. Also last final thing. I get this every single time we put out a 3D print. People will say, well, hey, help the community out and um, give us that STL file. Well, for starters, I have a designer that made that STL file. He doesn't want to put it out there, so I can't take credit for the STL file. I just help sketch it and make sure that it was designed and performing a certain way. Second thing, we've printed a shit ton of these and tested these over a long period of time. So the minute you guys start paying our electric bills, then I'll start giving you STLs, okay? I'll give you STLs like, you know, if you were to sleep with Brie Olsen, you would get an STD, but I would give you an STL. God, that was terrible. Holy shit, there goes my female retention. I'll see you later. Stay original.